Hello, this is Carmen with Cherish Legacies, and I'm here today to help you get started organizing your printed photos. And so you may be wanting to organize to digitize and scan yourself or to send them to our preferred vendor forever, whichever your plan is, this is the best way to get started and do that. I highly recommend that you spend the time in the front end organizing, it will save you time on the back end and it will save you money. So that's one of the reasons I say do all this in the uh, in the beginning. The other thing I will say is to not reminisce during this and try not to uh, every photo you pick up. Oh, I remember when I did this and and try to overthink. Should I keep this photo? Should I not? Don't spend a lot of time. So you want to do this as a very quick process and not overthinking it. So gather all your photos. Usually you're going to have them in drawers and boxes and all different kind of places around your house. So go gather them all into one place. And yes, you're going to forget some, some places and that's fine too, but try to get started getting them all in one place. And then all you need is you need bag, plastic bags. Any of the flat bags will do. These are not long-term storage recommendation, but for this, it'll be fine some kind of index cards or post notes in a pen, and that's all you need. Uh, if you're gonna um, have a lot of loose photos that are in boxes and not organized like most people do, then you're gonna need a big space, uh, like a table or a bed to spread out on. So we're gonna start, usually there's three different main ways that people have photos, and one of them, they have them in the packages. And if you have them in the packages and they're ordered in order, you're ahead of the game and that's great. Uh, so all you want to do is you want to come and you want to pull them out. Usually if they're in the package, nine times out of ten, um, we have duplicates. And because that was the thing at the time, we were going to share our photos. So the first thing I do is I go through real quick, pull out all the duplicates, throw them away. Then I go and then I look just make sure there's not anything that's blurred. As I said, we're going to go through this again. This first phase uh, is really quick. It's just anything obviously I don't want is taken out. And then I'll look to make sure there's not any dates anywhere. If there is a date, I would write the date on here or if I knew the date. Now, I'm not going to go look up a date. I'm not going to think for 20 minutes to try to remember the date. I'm just going to write a date if I know it or if it's on uh, the back of the photos. And then I'm gonna write, this is England. So I wanna, I don't remember the date at all. I'm gonna write England on the post -it note or note card. I'm gonna take the whole stack and I'm gonna just put it in my bag. So I have, that one's done for now, first round. Now, because most of the time you're gonna have uh, uh, negatives here. And so people will ask me, which should they, uh, which should they digitize? If these are an important set of photos, if these are the only photos I have of my great grandmother, if these are really important, the best trip I ever took in my life, then I may consider doing the negatives because negatives generally, if they were stored right, are generally going to be better uh, digitized than the printed photos. But digitizing. Negatives takes a little bit more time to go through and pick the ones I want, unless I'm going to just send them all. And so I usually, nine times out of ten, I'm going to get rid of the, the negatives, and I'm just going to do the print. Because it's easier to sort through the printed, and it's faster. So it just depends on how important that was. The second way that a lot of people will have uh, photos are in some kind of albums like this, the slide albums. I'm going to go through and pull them all out. Again, I'm going to make sure there's nothing written on the album that would tell me a date or written on the back of the photos. If it is, I'm going to put the date. I don't know what these are. Uh, I can guess. I'm not going to worry about that now. But I know these are lakes, so I'm going to pull each one of them out, put lake on them, and I'm going to put them in a plastic bag. So these are usually the easiest, and you don't need a lot of space for the next one is the little is when it gets tricky when you have stacks and stacks of photos in no order you have no idea what they are and most people have these so what i do is i get a big space 
I pull them out as the first one I happen to see, maybe Christmas. So I'm going to write Christmas and then I'm going to put it on the put it down on the table and I'm going to put all my Christmas ones there. I might do Halloween. So I'm going to think of themes and do this. I might think of people. So if they have a whole bunch of pictures of my dad, I might put my dad's name and start putting them there. Lake, travel, all these beach, anything I can think of. Everybody's photos are going to be different. So I can't tell you exactly what you're going to go. And you're going to keep adding. When I pull it out, I'm going to look, see if it fits in any of my categories. I'll either add another category quickly, or I may have some that end up again putting in the miscellaneous if I can't decide. So then, again, I do the same thing. I'm going to put them in baggies. This is the first step layer, right? I've done it really quick. So I'm going to have all these baggies. Then I go back the second time. I may go through them two to three times. Usually I try to do it only twice. I go back through these photos of England and I see, do I really need all these photos? How many photos do I want of England? And I try, if it's a trip uh, and I have hundreds and hundreds of photos then I might kind of think of, oh, well, I want about 25 of each thing we did or each day or something. I really try to narrow it down. And then after I'm done, you want, if you're going to send these, it doesn't matter as much if you're going to do this yourself, but if you're sending these to forever, you need at least 25 in a bag. Okay. If you have more than a hundred, and this is either if you're going to do it yourself or if you're sending it off, you have more than a hundred, I would look at dividing it. So if I had a whole stack of 200 Christmas photos, then maybe I want to do 80s Christmas, 90s Christmas, 2000 Christmas. Or maybe I want to do Christmas at uh, one, one side of the family, Christmas at another side of the family. So I'm going to try to divide it between 25 and 100. Each bag, if you send it to forever, needs to be 25 at least. Why do I want to break it up? Because if it goes over 100, it just makes the albums more manageable. Because whatever your name is on this, this is going to be an album already organized for you with this name. And that's why I said put the date too. They'll put the date if you have the date and the name. Then I'm going to count the photos and put a number and I'm going to circle it. And then I'll put it in the box. And then I'm going to do that again and again until I get through all my little bags. Then at the end, I'm going to add up all my bags numbers to have a total. That goes on your form, which is in here. And then I close it. I personally, if you're going to do forever and you're doing sending it off, be sure to take it to a FedEx box center somewhere that they're going to actually scan your box and track it from the time you drop it off. Okay, so that's my tips today for organizing your photos. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'm happy to help. And the links below that will um, take you to forever if you want to check out the, that vendor and the uh, digitization center and learn more about that. And I will see you next time. Thanks.